So continue the Venu Gita was describing how the gopis were in the house but seeing Krishna with the eyes of their bow. Just like Sanjay, by the mercy of Vyasadevi, he had eyes to see the, what was happening in the world of Kurukshetra and he narrated to Dhritarashtra. So they are in the house but they are seeing Krishna's form and describing Krishna's form. So in the time of the Ras, Krishna Muridhani, then Krishna ki Priyatama Gupyanki Lihi Manuharti. Sound of the foot was very dear to the gopis. English translation. So the gopis were describing the sound of the flute and they were very happy. So the commentary also explains in the time of the Raslila. The sound of the of Krishna's flute entered only in the ears of the gopis. Not everyone's ears. Krishna performed the Rasalila during the night. So in the time of the Rasalila, the sound of the flute entered only in the ears of the gopis. So in the beginning of the Rasalila, hearing the sound of the flute of Krishna only in the heart of the Vraja gopis, this strong desire came to see Krishna, to meet with him. And also, all this, for example, shyness, patience, all the rules of the Parashna Dharma, they left everything and they just came to meet their beloved Govinda. They forgot everything and they met Krishna. It describes the sound of the flute entering the ears of whom? Only the gopis' ears. Other people didn't enter the sound of the flute, otherwise, everyone would go no? to the Ras Lila. Do you understand? But when Krishna played the flute during the night, only the gopis came, only they heard the sound of the flute. Those gopis that for a long time, they were very eager to see Krishna for a long time already. In bhajan, two things are very important. One, utkanta, eagerness, and avish, absorption. If you don't, you don't have this, Bhagavan will not call you. And also won't give you darshan. We say that we want to see Bhagavan, but actually we don't want to see him, actually. Because we want to see him, at the same time we want to see material things. This is not possible. You cannot put in one uh, sword case, you cannot put two swords at the same time. Our situation now is like this. What do you want? We want ha material happiness and at the same time we want also to see Bhagavan. 
How is it possible? It's not possible. That day, that all the material happiness, material desires, you don't like anything else in this world. You only want to see Bhagavan only. Then Bhagavan will give darshan. That's the thing. What happened in the life of the gopis? They don't have any other desire. Only one. To meet Krishna. They don't want to see anything else rather than Govinda. They, they live in their houses, but in their mind, they only had Govinda. There's also some secret, hidden secrets, I'll tell you. Some hidden secrets there. Listen. Shumatarad and the Nitya Siddha Gopis, all of them, they didn't face any obstacle to meet Krishna. As soon as they heard the Krishna's food, they all automatically just went to meet him. No one asked them anything, like they had they faced no obstacles to meet Shri Krishna. Alright, they explain in the commentary. The Danita Siddha Gopis, they didn't face any obstacles. But the Sadhana Siddha Gopis, the camera is so they listened to the sound of the flute and they went away. The Nitas and the Gopis. And Jagamaya made a statue of them and placed the, the statue in their houses. That's why their husbands and all were thinking. My wife is still at home. Their husbands were thinking like this. Oh, Jogamaya also did one thing. The husband started thinking, Oh, my wife has gone to someone's house to take something, to bring something. They are about to come back. They were thinking like this, Jogamaya arranged. That's why these gopis also, they didn't face any obstacle. <laughs> but who was in their house for them? Like a statue, like a statue of them made by Jogamaya. And their husbands were thinking, oh, my wife is now sleeping. Or and they checked. Actually, who was sleeping on the bed was not their real wife. The real wife had gone to the Raslila. It was actually a statue, like a shadow made by Jogamaya. That's why even their husbands they didn't create any trouble, any obstacle. They didn't. They were not against. So the Nitas and the Gopis were not against. And the Sadhana Siddha Gopis, who had a lot of prem for Krishna, the, as a fruit of associating with the Nitas and the Gopis, they had strong attachment, anuraga for Krishna. What did they, ha did they have? Deep attachment, strong anurag for Krishna. If you don't have anurag, Jogamaya will not help you to go to the Rasalila. So they left. They two ki these two kinds, they were able to go to the Rasalila. This is the Gopis and the Salana Siddha who had anurag for Anuraga for Krishna. But some gopis, they still didn't have anurag for Krishna and they didn't, hadn't associated completely with the Nitesna gopis. Jogamaya stopped them. How? Their husband was saying, Are you crazy? How can you go? So continue. Where are you going in the middle of the night? Where are you going? Three ships of gopis. So their husbands, 
forcefully took them and put them in the house bound. Yeah. They couldn't leave. So these gopis who stayed back home, they started feeling so much, so much unhappiness and separation from Krishna because they couldn't go to the Rasalila. So at that moment they were thinking about Krishna so much. And by the mercy of Yoga Maya, they, in, in the Atma Sharir, they were able to reach Rasalila. Later on, Shukadeva Goswami explains in his verse. After Krishna disappeared from the Rasalila, the gopis started singing Gopi Gita. And in the Gopi Gita, they say, Pati Sutanvaya, having given up husband and kids. Gopi said in his verse of the Gopi Gita, we gave up our kids and husbands to come to you. And now we're, you left us helpless and your life disappeared. Pati Sutanaya, this verse of Gopi Gita explains. Sutta means sons. So have you given up our own sons, we came here. So in this sentence, it looks like that these gopis, they had kids. It looks like they had kids, right? From this verse. But the Acharyas explained the following. Actually, the gopis didn't have any children. They didn't have children. Actually, nephew, niece, so they were taking care of the niece or nephew like they were their own, their own kids. And they would like even breastfeed or something, but it's actually, and accepting as like son, but it's actually nephew and niece. Just like if you live in one life, to, one family together, the son of the older brother of your husband, means your nephew or niece, you also accept him like your own son, but it's not your son. It's not your son born from your own womb, not your biological children. But you like so we like him as like your kid, young kid, your nephew or niece. So this is a very secret thing. That's why this Gopi Gita, this verse is there. Okay, so the sadhana see the gopis, they were not ordinary. For thousands of years, they, they performed very hard sadhana. They chanted the Gopal Mantra, like in Treta Yuga. Ramachandra went to Dandakaranya, seeing him, all the munis and rishis, they started running behind Ramachandra. Why? Because for thousands of years they chanted Gopal Mantra. So they had attained Swarupa Siddhi. They had already realized their Swarup. The Gopi Bhav they had. They had already realized. And seeing Bhagavad Ramachandra, they felt to deepen for Krishna. And they started running behind Ramachandra. At that moment, Ramachandra, who knows everything, he said, Look, hey Rishis, I understand the mood you have in your heart. But look, in these pastimes of Ram, Ram Avatar, I won't be able to accept you as wife. Why? Because I made a vow that I would have only one wife. That's why I cannot accept you as consort. But you have seen my form. And you have felt this bhav in your heart after seeing me. So I give you a benediction that after the pastimes of Rama are finished, when I will appear as Krishna in Vapara Yuga, all of you will be born as gopis in Braj. 
and you'll be born in Gopi, Gopi body. And you get married to Gopas, and then after that, you also say to many this is the Gopis, and as a fruit of that, deep and oraga for me will come appear in your heart. Means I will accept you in Parakya Bhav. So by the mercy of Ramachandra, all of all of these dishes and munis, they appeared in they were born in Braj. For thousand years, all these dishes they performed a lot of austerities. So in their mind, they didn't have any kind of material desires in their mind. No material desires, their heart was clean. So how, how the material desires are coming in our hearts? According to previous life's impressions, samskaras. According to the previous life's samskaras, is that in the conditioned soul's heart, this samsara vas, the material desires come. But these rishis who now became gopis, they, they had done so many austerities for thousands of years. How many years? 10,000 years. Do you understand? For 10,000 years, all these rishis, they were chanting Gopal Mantra. And in their heart, Gopi Baba showed, appeared. Gopal Mantra is not a normal mantra. That's why Gopal Mantra is called Mantra Raj. Which mantra? Mantra Raj. The king of the mantras. So they came now in the form of gopis. So desire to get married or desire for family and everything, this is not possible to come in their hearts. Our charities in the commentary, they explain. In the heart of the gopis, there was no kind of material desires at all. Because it didn't have some scar from previous lives for this. Shastra explains. The jiva, according to, is doing everything according, according to some scar of previous lives. Do you understand? So the samskara from previous lives makes us do everything in our life according to the samskara of previous lives. Tulasadas also wrote, how to know who came from Sarga and who came from hell? How to know? Do you understand? According to the samskara, if some person came from Sarga, the person will have mode of nature, of, of goodness. If somebody came from hell, how is that person have mode of ignorance? There was a saint that used to tell a beautiful story. One person, so this person, this saint was going to different people asking for food, nobody would give him food. He met one saint. Seeing the saints, this person told, oh, like, he was like a bum or something. He came in and said, oh, I go to people's houses and everyone chastises me, insults me, no one gives me food. The saint said, because these people who went to their houses, they are, not, they are all animals, hogs and dogs. Oh, they were human beings now. Even though they were human beings, in their heart, they don't have the quality in their heart of being compassionate, which is the quality of human beings. But actually, they have just come from animals' body. Just now. How? Then the saint gave him transcendental eyes. He said, look, they, these people who haven't given you food, look at them, look at them. Then he saw, oh, this is true, they're all dogs. They're cats, they were cats, they were dogs in the previous lives, they're animals. They only eat for themselves, they never feed others. Animals never feed others. 
ये आए हैं पशुजनी से है अभी संस्कार इसके so they just came from animal's body they don't have they still have the samskara of being an animal okay so he went to another village the same person and then only by seeing him immediately people came ready to feed him with food so when he went to another village the same told to go to that village and then he went everyone came ready to feed him and the same said looking with transcendental eyes all those were demigods in the previous lives so not only by the body but by the behavior you can identify you can identify someone by the behavior of that person. It's not only by the body in which the, that entity is. So, samskara is everything. So, the gopis, sadhana, sadhana, see the gopis, for thousands thousand of years they were doing bhajan. They were chanting Gopal Mantra and they got the mercy of Ramachandra. Then they were born in, in Braj. They took birth as gopis. So they didn't have any material desire at all. At all. Jogamaya just made this circumstance for them, but actually they never got married even. Just to manifest Parakya Bhav, Jogamaya made the gopis just like a um, paper marriage, like just in the paper they were married, let's say like this. But actually the gopis, they are not married. Jiva Goswami wrote, their parents had like a dream that oh today my daughter got married it was just like this it was just like a so called marriage like a dream and they were very young also maybe 2-3 years old the gopis how do they know something about what is wedding what is marriage they barely know how to dress up how to put a dress on to put a garment on they barely know which cloth where to put in the body they were two and two and a half years old maximum four or six okay now you got married to that person go to that person's houses so then they would go until nowadays in Bihar it's like this they, they get kids married and for three years they continue in their father's house and then they are sent to the husband's house when their kids so Jogamaya just to make them relish Parakyaras just show this Leela of getting married. Guru Pagoswami explains something even, even more. The Gopis, how come the Gopis had children? If someone who has even got that period yet, how come they have a baby? It's impossible to have a baby if you have never had a period. Another point. So the husband of the Gopis they would be very far from the gopis actually Jogamai was making a, a mood in the, in the mood of the gopas thinking oh this is my wife she's in my house Jogamai would create this in their, in their mind but then Jogamai would from morning to evening just keep them busy from morning until 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. next day they were busy all the time busy busy doing this this and that the gopas the wife the husband of the gopas
So they were thinking, my wife is at home. She's one is sleeping or doing something. But then Jogamai would arrange that they would be completely busy in work. They wouldn't have any time. They wouldn't even enter in the room of their wives. Not on the same bed even. Gopis wouldn't even allow their husband to sit on the same bed. Sorry, Joga Mai wouldn't allow. Listen properly. You're sleeping. So they would be so tired, but they just come home and say, Oh, my wife is sleeping in the room. Joga Mai wouldn't even allow the husband of the Gopis to sleep or sit on the same bed as the Gopis. In the commentary is explained. In the commentary is explained of Ujjal Nilamani. The husbands of the gopis, they couldn't even sit on the same bed as their wives. The gopis, they have so much loyalty to Krishna. Fidelity. Gopis don't touch anyone besides Krishna, Rajendra Nanda. The gopis that perform Rasa Lila with Bhagavan, they are completely chaste. Their husband couldn't even touch them. Don't speak of touching them. Couldn't even enter their room. So how come they would have children? So the gopis said we left their, our husbands to come here. We gave up all children as well. But these children that they are mentioning is actually not their own children. Understand? Not their own children. It's actually their niece or nephew or something like that. That's why even chaste ladies, they are worshipping the feet of the gopis. Very chaste ladies. In the commentary, Shila Jiva Goswami, he explained the commentary so beautifully. Infidelity. The chest of the gopis are never harmed. Never, ever. Because they don't know anything else but Krishna. The other commentary explains. The gopis that had had kids, had had children, the logicists may say, oh no, but they are saying they have kids. They are saying they gave up their kids and, and, and husband. So even if you say the gopis had children, then Jogamaya would do then these gopis who had children, Jogamaya didn't allow them to go to Raslila. Then these gopis bound them at home. And then they started feeling so much anurag for Krishna. Then at that moment, the gopis in their Atma Sharir, in they entered the Raslila. But what actually happened? Just to make people understand, you say something and the other thing is the reality is different. Do you understand or not? What did I say? Some things just make some people understand. Like the logicist people, what will they understand? Can you say, oh no, okay, the gopis are saying that we have given up our, our husbands in this shloka of the gopis. 
We gave up our own brothers, our friends, our children, our parents, our husbands. For those who have logic, like the logic thinking people, we say, okay, you're saying this. Actually, Jogamaya didn't allow them to go because there are some rules to enter the Raslila. Bhagavan will not accept everyone in the Raslila. He'll only accept those who are qualified. If you are not qualified, then Bhagavan will not allow you to go. You must have qualification. Everything, qualification is something very important. Qualification. So the gopis who had purvarag, they're saying, How Krishna by his smile, with his sweet smile, Krishna with his sweet smile, he is giving the nectar of his lotus leaves to everyone by the sound of the flute. So the beautiful smile of Krishna, those who haven't seen his smile, their life is useless. What is the meaning, the use of having eyes? Why? Which one? What is the meaning of having eyes? Why did God give us eyes? You tell me. To see the beautiful form of Govinda. We want to see beautiful form. What is the duty of having eyes? To see the form. And the ears. Why do you have ears? To hear about God. To hear the glorification of the Lord. For example, ear, the, ear, the ear wants to hear sweet melodies and the nose wants to, to smell amazing fragrances and the touch wants to feel touch, like your skin wants to feel touch. You know, Panchatan Matra, um, smell, form, taste, touch. Nature of the eyes is to see forms, beautiful forms. So, those eyes who haven't seen the beautiful form of Krishna, it's useless having eyes if it isn't to see the beautiful form of Krishna. May those eyes who haven't seen Krishna being, be burnt in the fire if you haven't seen Govinda that day. Vrajabhasi say. May the eyes be, be burning the fire. <coughs> if with those eyes you cannot see Govinda, may your eyes be burned in the fire. Govinda has such a beautiful form. If you haven't seen his form, what are you seeing? There's no other fruit of having eyes rather than to see the beautiful form of Krishna. The use of having eyes is just to see Govinda. If once you see Govinda, you don't have desire to see anything else. For example, yesterday I told the story of Bilamangala Thakur. He became blind. The date caught his hand and was taking him. 
at the same time, Thakurji said, Krishna told, Hey, Bila Mangal, you are very scholar. You're from South India. He was born in the banks of the Venonadi, Krishna Venonadi, this river, Krishna Ven. Then Krishna told Bila Mangal, tell me some verses, because you're very scholar, you're from South India, Brahma. Then Bila Mangal Thakur started, he created and, and told so many beautiful verses to Krishna. Then Krishna was holding his hand and hearing him glorify. Just like a very dear friend, intimate friend. Later on, the name of the book was given Krishna Shri Krishna Karnamrit means verses that give happiness to the ears of Krishna. So beautiful this katha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was in, traveling to South India, he collected this book and he told the devotees, all of you should memorize these verses from this book. It is so beautiful. When Mahaprabhu was immersed in Bhav, in the Gambira, when he was there, Sarupadamadani Rai Ramananda, they were reading one one verse of, of uh, Krishna Karnamita to Mahaprabhu, and Mahaprabhu would be very pleased because this book is very beautiful. Mahaprabhu brought two books from South India, one one book of Tata Siddhanta, another Sasa Siddhanta. Tata Granta is Brahma Samhita. And Tata Granta is the Shri Krishna Karnama. Who gives happiness to the years of Krishna? <coughs> but our Acharya say, Bila Mangala Thakur is a Krishna Paksha Gopi. Krishna Paksha Gopi. There are many kinds of Gopis like Sop Paksha, Vip Paksha, Suhid Paksha. Some Gopis are Radha Paksha Gopis for one point to Shrimati Radhika. Some are Ubai Paksha, they have both. They have the same kind of love for Radha and Krishna. Example is Lalita Vishaka de, de Ashta Saki. So what is the name? Ubai Paksha means both. Some gopis, Krishna Paksha gopis, they have Nishta only in Krishna. Some gopis, they have Radha Nishta Paksha. Three kinds of gopis. Radha Nishta, Krishna Nishta, in another kind, Ubhai Nishta. Three kinds. The manjaris, what are the manjaris? They have Nishta in Shimati Radhika. The topmost mood of the Gauriya Vaishnavas, the topmost desire of the Gauriya Vaishnavas is to attain Manjari Bhav. What is the symptom of Manjari Bhav? Having Radha Nishta and Bhavala Sarati being completely one pointed to Shrimati Radhika. Don't go anywhere else rather than Shrimati Radhika. Wherever Shrimati Radhika walks, all the gopis. They go behind Shmati Radhika, just like a shadow connects to the body. Just like a body and a shadow. Where is your shadow? With you. Wherever you are, your shade is also together, your shadow. Wherever you go, your shade will also go along. So wherever Shmati Radhika goes, all the manjaris, they go with Shmati Radhika. The manjaris, they have Aikantika Radha Nishta. Means they are completely one pointed to Shamati Radhika. One pointed to Shamati Radhika. Manjaris are like this. Wherever Shamati Radhika goes, the manjaris go, go along. Even in the dream, even in the dream. They never meet independently with Krishna, not even in dreams. Sometimes Shamati Radhika tests them. She tests them to see if they really have loyalty to them, to her or not. 
So Shmatarazka goes and says to the Mandiris, go bring some flowers from that garden. And then the Mandiris go, and then the other way, Shmatarazka indicates to Krishna, look, the Mandiris are taking flowers in that garden, go there. And Krishna goes, and Krishna tries to, to how to say, flirt, catch, them. catch the Mandiris. To, to, but the gopi, the manjaris are so so loyal to Shmatiradika, they don't fall in the how to say sweet talks of Krishna. How do you say like how? Under yeah. his spell. In the his spell, they don't fall in his spell. Yeah. yeah. And then Krishna starts trying to pull pull the cloth of the manjaris, and then the manjaris they scream for Shmatiradika like they ca calling out for help. And they start crying, Radha, help me. Seeing this, seeing this, Shmatradka indicates for, to Krishna, Krishna, don't disturb the manjaris, leave them alone. They have Radha Nishtha, loyalty, loyalty to Shmatradka. And what is Ubai Nishtha means having loyalty in both, Radha and Krishna. Sometimes, Lalita and Vishaka, when Shmatarat is not present, then they meet with Krishna. For example, the story of Lalita Kunda, you know, if you go to Lalita Kunda, do you ha have you heard this story next to Nandagao? Shmatarat said, told Narada, every day you're singing Radha Krishna. Why today you're singing Lalita Krishna? Narada Rishi said, your beloved Govinda, because you're not present in your absence, he sat in the in the Julan in the swing of Lalita. You know the story? Then Lalita Vishaka, all of them, they are called Ubai. Sometimes they meet with Krishna without Shmatiratka being there. But loyalty of the Manjaris, the Nishta of the Manjaris is only in Shmatiratka. They don't want to go anywhere else. Life after life, they want to be born in Vrindavan and be the servant of Shmatiratka. Some gopis have loyalty towards Krishna. For example, the Nishta, Brinda also. Vrindarika, all of them, they have Krishna Nishta, means they have loyalty to Krishna. They serve Shemati Radhika also, but they have their loyalty in Krishna. So they are called Krishna Nishta Gopis. The role of Vrindadevi is nothing less. Vrinda Devi, she has the responsible for the meeting and separation of Radha and Krishna. Vrinda Devi, she works in three forms in Vrindavan. Which forms? Jogamaya uh, Purnamasi and Vrinda Devi. Vrinda Devi. The role of Vrindadev is very beautiful. So anyway, Bilamangala Thakur is called Krishna Paksha Gopi. All his shlokas actually generally describing the glories of Krishna. Okay, let's continue. I'm just going to put it in the file. One second. कृष्ण से मिली है ये गोपियां अर्थात गोविंद के बंसी धनी सुनते ही है जो जिस अवस्था में थी उसी अवस्था में वो चल पड़ी है कोई गोपी जो है सिंगार कर रही थी है सुंदर आज गोविंद के साथ मिलने जाऊंगी है अकेली जो है 
अपने कमरा बंद करके श्रृंगार कर रही थी है जानते आज गोविंद है वंशी धनी करे हम चल पर सिंगार कर रही थी so these gopis they were in their room getting ready all the ornaments was proper whatever they had to be and then Krishna played his flute they don't know when Krishna is gonna play the flute at any moment he can play the flute so the gopis what do they do they're always attentive their ears are always open like when the sound of the flute will come then immediately they'll go so what, whatever the gopis were doing, they gave up to go meet with Krishna. Sometimes I'm feeling cold, we feel cold in our ears and we cover our ears with like the beanie or something, scarf. But the gopis want to have their ears very attentive to hear Krishna's flute. Sleeping back under. Huh? Sleeping back? <laughs> so in the cold you go inside the blankets, whatever, as much as possible. Body. Body. Ah, just like a potato sack. In the cold you go inside and... <laughs> <laughs> like in a sleeping bag. <laughs> so the gopis, they keep their ears very much open. Whenever the sound of the flute will come, they want to hear it. Always eager. Hearing the sound of the flute, the gopis. Oh yeah, I was telling the story of one gopi. So the gopi had completely finished dressing up the shringar and then she heard the sound of the flute and then the gopi came to Krishna. Krishna saw, wow, amazing. This gopi is so dressed up, so beautiful. Shringar, you know, the ornaments and everything. 16 ornaments. 16 ornaments and 20 kinds of alankar. Sorry, 16 shringar and 20 kinds 20 kind of alankar. Different ornaments and and decoration. decoration in the body. Krishna said, Gopi, everything's very beautiful, but why do you have blue eyeliner and only one eye, not in the other eye? And then the Gopi told, I was getting ready. I was dressing up. I was getting ready for you. But I put eyeliner in one eye. When I was going to put the eyeliner in the other eye, in that moment, you played your flute. I, I heard the sound of the flute. That's why I couldn't put it. And then Krishna said, hearing this, Krishna started crying. Like he became, his eye became full of tears. And then Krishna, he asked Kajal, eyeliner to another gopi, and then he himself finished putting the eyeliner in that gopi's eyes. And the rest of the Kajal eyeliner, Krishna rubbed his finger on a stone. Until nowadays, if you go to Ajanok Gaon, to remember this Lila, the great great son of Krishna called Vajranab, he created this, this village, this village of Vishaka. If until now you go to this village and you will see in the temple that the stone is still there, if you rub your finger in the stone, the eyeliner color will come to your hand. Before that stone was outside, 20 years ago. But now, people are taking everything, like rubbing, rubbing, taking everything. But now, this stone is protected inside. People will come and see. Otherwise, everyone will take and then. Então, a menina funciona, mas está guardadinha. A gente vai ficar do lado de fora. Continua não quebrada? Essa é a roupa? In the future, maybe no one will be able to touch this stone because people are taking. Gopiyo ki acid dasa. Gavindu ki venus dhani ki acid dasa. Eh? 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 E
So the Gopi sound, the flute, flute sound, flute sound is called Zava Bhuta Manoharam. So some flutes, only still the heart of the gopis, other sound of the flute. Sarva Chitta Manoharam means still the heart of all the living entities. Different kinds of flutes and sound of the flutes, you know. So depending on which sound goes where, that people will come. The sound of the flute, Venu Dhani, is actually calling each gopi by their own name. Sala so Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains. Mukta 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 this song very beautiful. <laughs> He told so beautifully. The son of the flutes is saying, Rade, Rade. Hearing this, the manjaris become alert. Their heart melts and they become affected by the son of the flute. The son of the flute is calling the name of my mistress, Rade, Rade. Hearing the sound of the flute, even the animals, all the Vrajavas become attracted and happy by the sound of the flute. But hearing the sound of the flute, the beloved of the gopis, beloved of Krishna, the gopis, they feel fear, they f embarrassment, fear of the society, patience. But actually, they, gi they give up all these feelings and they come and meet Krishna. So everyone heard the sound of the flute. When Krishna comes back from cow grazing, <coughs> he comes playing the flute. When he goes and comes back, he's playing the flute from cow grazing. So everyone hears the sound of the flute. But depending on the ras of the person, he'll feel things according to that ras, ras. For example, when the friends of Krishna hear the sound of the flute, the sakas think, Krishna is calling me for cow grazing. <coughs> And the cows also come yeah. and come around Krishna because they are being called also by the sound of the flute, the calves as well. And the sakas, they, they come to play with Krishna. Maybe a saka stayed back and when he hears the sound of the flute, the saka comes running to meet everyone. When Mother Jashoda hears the sound of the flute, when Krishna is coming back from cow grazing, Krishna comes playing the flute and the cowherd boys come after. Cows and cows and everyone comes. Mother Jashoda, when she, she thinks, when she hears the sound of the flute, oh, Krishna is feeling hungry. Let me prepare something very quickly for him to eat. Do you understand? Let me prepare the food for him. So Krishna is in the forest. He still hasn't come home. And the sound of the flute already came to Mother Jashoda's ears. And Mother Jashoda starts because of her Vatsanya Bhav. She starts preparing the food for Krishna. She doesn't want it to be one second late. Because I don't want Krishna to be hungry. Are you feeling hungry? 
Gurudeva, não, não, first to sit down. Let me wash your feet, Gurudeva. Let me do your puja. Let me offer sandalwood to you. Let me do arati to you first, Gurudeva. Gurudeva, tell me some harikata, but it's already 2 a.m. Gurudeva, tell me some harikata. I'm feeling sleepy. Gurudeva, but you're transcendental, Gurudeva. You're transcendental. Tell some harikata, come on. But Mazda showed that because of her Vatsalya Bhav prepares everything in advance. Actually, first the gopis come back. Do you understand? When Krishna comes back from Calgary, the gopis come ahead. Midday, gopis meet with Krishna. And, and before Krishna has come back from Calgary, all the gopis, they have already come back home, had a shower, and then... They go to Nandalai and they prepare the food for Krishna. Oh no, let's go together with Krishna. No. The gopis go ahead. No, no one doesn't even know. When the Krishna's gopis met Krishna, no one doesn't even know. They prepared the food. Maja showed the Rohini Devi. They prepared the food. And Krishna has a bath. Do you understand? Sit down for having prasad. And so many villas take place. What I want to tell about this Son of the flute is one, but when the Sakas hear it, the Sakas say, Oh, Govind is calling us to play or to call grace. The gopis with Vatsalya Bhav, breastfeeding mothers, they think, Oh, Govind is coming, let's prepare food. And when the gopis hear the son of the flute, they feel so eager because of their love, gopis. And they come to meet with Krishna. And it's so much eager to meet Krishna. All these gopis, what they were doing? They gave up all the fear from society, patience, all the rules of society. They offer everything. And they came quickly to meet Krishna. They became completely crazy. Uh, son of the flute makes everyone mad. The son of the flute. Which kind of madness? You give up the rules of society, shyness, whatever to do or not. You just give up all these concerns. Because their mind has been stolen by Krishna. Their mind is stolen. So the gopis are saying here in this verse. Shukadeva Goswami explains. Shumatanath is saying here. This verse is so beautiful. Shumatanath says in the stage of Mahabhav sometimes he becomes humble, sometimes jealous, jealous, no, jealous. In the Mahabhav stage, all opposite moods manifest at the same time. Sometimes humility, sometimes jealousy, jealousy, right? Jealousy and humility at the, at the same time. But generally it cannot happen, right? At the same time. But in the stage of Mahabhav, the gopis sometimes become very humble. Oh, we cannot see Gobinda. Oh my, Ailas, Ailas. What is the fruit of having eyes? Is to see Gobindu. And the stage of Anurag. Actually, you see Govinda, but you think you have never seen him before. Ever. Two things are in Anurag, deep attachment stage. One is Parasparanus Sneha Anubandhanam, and second, Darshane Atriptata. Means, the Darshane Atriptata means the more you see Govinda, still you think you never saw him. But this is true because 
Govinda is at each time manifesting a newly beautiful, ever fresh form and most beautiful. At each moment, each moment, Krishna is manifesting in a more beautiful and young form. And in this world, it's not possible because we are young, then we grow up, then we become old. The nature of our body is opposite, it's always dwindling. But Govinda, no, it's always Nava Jovananchas, ever fresh, newly beautiful form. Each time his body is manifesting a, even a newer and most beautiful form. So you feel always that you have never even seen him before. This is true. New, ever fresh, newly formed, every moment. The more you see him, it looks like you have ever, you feel like you never saw him before. Krishna has such a beautiful form. Tribhuvan Nachai. Dubai. One particle of his beauty is enough to conquer the beauty of all the three worlds. If you put all the form, beautiful forms of all the unlimited universes in one side of the scale, this is not equal even to one drop of Krishna's beauty. Krishna is so beautiful, so beautiful. It's not possible to explain with words. With our intelligence, with words, we cannot describe it, explain it, how beautiful Krishna is. If you see him, you don't want to go back to your house. If once you see Govinda, you don't have desire to say anything else. You'll be just thinking about him all the time. So Bila Mangal Thakur was explaining about him. He saw Gobinda once and Bila Krishna told him, let me give you back your eyes. Bila Mangala said, no, because I have already seen him. I don't want to say anything else in this world. Leave it. May people in this world think I'm blind. Just like you know about Suradas Kata. Because if you once you see Gobinda, you don't have any desire to see anything else in this world. Such a beautiful form. The sadhaka performing bhajan slowly, slowly. When he reaches the stage of bhava and prema, then Krishna gives a darshan for only one moment. And then the devotee becomes so immersed in bliss, and the devotee is praying, Hey Prabhu, I'm an offender. Why? Because in the society of the devotees, I have described your form, and now I see really your form, and I feel that I'm offended because I compared your form with so much less than what you really are. Example, a piece of chickpea. How can you compare a piece of chickpea with the huge Himalaya mountains? So I compared the Himalaya mountains with a small chickpea. This was my mistake, my, my offense. <laughs> so your form is so beautiful and I have compared your form with material things so I'm an offender in the assembly of the sadhus in the assembly of the saints I'm an offender for having described your form in this way in the assembly of the saints Krishna has such a beautiful form what can I say it's incomparable, it's impossible to compare his form with anything else in this world. This is a verse from Vedanta Sutra. Arupabhat means his form is, you cannot compare to anything, any other form you cannot compare. Means Krishna's form you cannot compare it with any other form. He's incomparable. Whatever we say in this world, uh, how are the eyes of God? What do we say? Kamalanayan, lotus eyes. Are his eyes really like the lotus? No. The lotus for one, two days is very beautiful, but after that, all the petals will fall, it will wither and become stale, right? Even the fragrance won't, won't remain after a few days. The beauty of the lotus, everything will dwindle. But God is not like this. So why did I compare Bhagavan's eyes with the lotus? So we say, how are the eyes of Bhagavan? That's why Shmatarajka became angry. 
Shamatradka said, Hey Krishna, describe how is my form. And Shema thought, Shema knew today I'll be uh, like today I'll be it won't be good for me because she's asking me this probably the result won't be good and then Krishna I'll be in trouble thank you. then Krishna told oh Radha your face is like the moon you know and Radha heard this and became very angry you have to compare to, to glorify your beauty I have to compare with something but, but why did you compare my beauty with the with the moon? The moon comes from the ocean. The water of the ocean is salty. So you are actually disgracing my father because you compare him to a salty ocean. Shmatradga took to the negative side. And also another point about the the moon, the poison. From the moon. So you compare my brother with the poison. Because the poison also came from the ocean, right? So. So if you have rasa, tatuk, going, no rasa, you will understand. Otherwise, it's just like playing the flute in front of a buffalo and the buffalo will continue chewing his grass. <laughs> ah, whatever they are saying, they say. You know, like the ruminants, you call it in English also? Ruminants? So the bull, the bull buffalo, they ruminate, they ruminate. They eat and then they again come, bring back the food and again and again chewing. So if you don't know about this knowledge, it would be just like playing the flute in front of the buffalo. The buffalo just continue ruminating, continues, keep goes on ruminate. In proverbio portoghese. Quando fala in serasa catà, essa cosa è levata che non tem conhecimento da raça. So, doing Varshana Parikrama, crossing Sakarikor, then we go to that place. There's a lake where we sit down next to the Dangar, Mangar, Murkuti. One side Murkuti and the other side Mangar. Gahar Ban Parikrama in the Varshana Parikrama. We sit there. We sit there. You know the song? Varsane me mora kuti. What is the song? I don't know that name. Krishna. Why the moon coming from poison from the moon? Turning the mountain. Turning the mountain. The ocean. Foi na foi isso aqui que tu falou, né? Porque o pai seria o oceano, né? Porque a lua vem do oceano. E aí e o veneno também. Ele falou outro dia isso. E aí o pai da lua é o oceano. To the, to the moon, because the moon came from the ocean and poison as well, right? So Krishna is going for cow grazing. Who goes with Krishna for cow grazing? Boladev Prabhu also comes. Baladev Prabhu. His friends, so in one side Baladeva and in the other side Shridam. When Krishna goes for crying, cow grazing, two people go with him and the sakas go like a little bit separate. So one is Baladev Prabhu, because Amanda Jashoda says, Baladev, you are very healthy and strong. So you should not allow anything bad to happen to Govinda. You have to protect him. Because you're going to the jungle. There are demons there, ghosts. Which is someone who wants to maybe give trouble to Krishna or something. 
So you have to go with him. But sometimes the friends of Krishna, after cow grazing, they come and tell Mother Jashoda, Maya, today we saw there was a, a saint of long beard that came and started to offer flowers to the feet of your son, son and bring puja. Mother Jashoda thought, Oh my, maybe some witch or ghost, like some bad entity, you know, someone bad. Who is this person with long beard? It's actually Lord Brahma. But Mother Jashoda is thinking, maybe it's like a bad like a entity, how can you say anything? Like bad. Huh? Yeah, like a demon, some bad person, you know, but in the subtle level, like. So because these great demigods, they would come and worship the feet of Krishna. So, but the Sakas were telling Mother Jashoda, and Mother Jashoda thought it's, some, it's like certainly a ghost or something bad, or some demon. So she would put it like in 12 limbs of Krishna and telling the mantra. Oh Lord Nishihadeva, may you protect my son. So she would chant Nishiha mantra. Who is Nishiha actually? Nishiha is actually one form of Krishna himself. But Mother Jashoda, because of her Vatsalabha, she wanted to protect Gopal. Then she would. Uh, bless her son with the Nishiha Mantra. May Nishiha Dev protect you, my son. In your forehead, putting Tilak and telling the name of Keshav, and she would blow. Oh, my son, may, may Keshav protect you. She's doing a lot of prayers for him. Putting Tilak and chanting the names. Oh, may, may the navel of my of my son be protected by Narayana. Which Narayana? The Shila she has at home. This Narayana may Gopal protect my Gopal. But the original Narayana is Krishna himself. But Mother Jashoda doesn't even know this or doesn't care. In Braj, there's only one mood. No one accepts Krishna as Bhagavan. That's it. Krishna is like a family member, Lokik Sadbandu Bhat Priti. Just like in this world, we behave with our parents, friend, husband, wife, children, family. We take care of our kids like, like a normal kid. In the same way, the Vrajavas have the same mood towards Krishna. Even though He's the Supreme Lord. God is the supreme. He has all the power. He's the supreme, all, all powerful. Still, Brajabasis don't accept him as being Bhagavan. Yes, if there's some problem or something, why do they remember Gobinda in the time of problems? Because the Brajabasis think Krishna knows some mystic power for sure. He has some Super, super mundane power, maybe tantra, mantra, some mystic, some, you know, some people have gotten some mystic power, some people, tantra, mantra. So, that's why he manifests sometimes more plans, because he has some power. But Krishna himself is, there has no potency. They don't think Krishna is Bhagavan. In the time of Nama Samskar ceremony, Garagachara told him, Nanda, your son will have qualities as like Narayana. Hearing this, Nanda Maharaj understood that, okay, sometimes Narayana will enter in the body of my son. Will possess the body of my son. Just like if someone is possessed by a ghost. If someone is possessed by a ghost, that person will not give his own identification. He'll, the ghost in, 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 that is in his body will give it, identify himself. So they think sometimes, oh, Narayana enters the body of Krishna. So Narayana is doing the things. 
Who lives to get it out? It was not Aina. Haruko Paul can never do this. He's a young boy, seven years old. Lift Giriraj Govardhan, this is not possible. Maybe some god or demigod possessed his body. Devata Abhishta. Some people get some mystic perfection in mantras and, and by this they can establish, for example, demigods in their throats. Example is Keshav Kashmir, who he had Saraswati Devi in his throat. Whatever he would say wasn't him, it was actually Saraswati Devi. Chitana Charitam. Mahaprabhu defeated him, Keshav Kashmir, isn't it? So in this way, Vrajavasis, they're not ready to accept that Krishna is Bhagavan. They only know Govinda is a member of my family. Krishna is exactly like us. They have Lokik Sadbandabad Priti. We feel hungry. Krishna also feels hungry. We need to prepare food for him. Okay, continue. Krishna was went cow grazing. Who was next to him? Aldev Prabhu and Shridam. When Krishna plays the flute, sometimes Krishna plays the flute, but sometimes Baladev Prabhu also plays the flute. This is a secret. Baladev Prabhu was the son of Rohini. But actually Baladev Prabhu was the son of whom? Whose son? He came first in the womb of Devaki. Then Jogamaya attracted Baladev and established him in the womb of Rohini. And that's why he's also called Rohini Nandan. He's called Rohini Nandan. Vasudev Maharaj had many wives, many queens. So one of the names of when the queen is Rohini. So that's why Baladev is called Rohini Nandan. But Mother Rohini Devi, she would mainly stay in Braj. She spent a lot of time in Braj. That's why for staying in Braj, Baladev Prabhu also stayed in Braj. With his mom Rohini Devi. So Baladeva Prabhu also would call Nanda Maharaj's father. Do you understand? Baladeva Prabhu also would call Nanda Maharaj as father. But who is his real father? He's actually Basudeva Maharaj. Basudeva Maharaj also had some cows. So he's also called a cowherd man. Cowherd man, but he's also, also Kshatriya. But Nanda Maharaj was what? Gopajati, means cowherd person. But still, a milkman. But Baladev Prabhu also would accept Nanda Maharaj as father, would see Nanda Maharaj as his father. Do you understand? So here, Brajisha Sutayu is in the plural, plural Krishna case. So means Krishna and Baladev Prabhu. 
किंतु इसमें करें फिर इसको यदि संधि विच्छेद करके संस्कृत के लिखा है इफ यू डिवाइड द सिलेबस जो और द कंजंक्शन इन द संस्कृत बोले देखो यू सी दैट संग कृष्णा और कृष्णा हिमसेल्फ एंड श्रीमती राधिका अर्थात कृष्णा जब गोचारण के कृष्णा व्हेन फॉर काउ ग्रेजिंग प्लेइंग द फूल उस वंशी किस The sound of the flutes came from where? Krishna sometimes playing the flutes and sometimes Shmati Radhika was playing the flutes also. Why? This is according to Rasa Vichar. Not everyone will understand. Sometimes Krishna knowingly would mess up with the melody of the flute. And then Shmati Radhika would take the flute from Krishna and then she said, like, you don't know how to properly play the flute, she would say. Then Shmati Radhika would teach Krishna how to play the flute. Do you understand? Krishna, because he is Bhagavan, he knows all, has all the knowledge, of course. But Krishna knowingly, like on purpose, he would sometimes mess up with the rhythm or melody of the flute. Then Shmati Radhika takes the flute from him and snatches the flute from him and says, you don't know how to play. Imagine, for example, Kirtan is going on, someone is playing Karatal. If the Karatal or Harmonium, Harmonium is in one melody and Karatal in another rhythm, Maridang in another rhythm, Kirtan won't be proper, right? Three things should be in the same rhythm for the Kirtan. Harmonium, Maridanga and Karatal. Three should be in the same, in the same rhythm, isn't it? And the person who is singing should be also in the same tone. Someone like singing a, a, a higher or lower, you know, like tone. The, otherwise, it will be a rasa bas dosh. Those who are those who are hearing won't feel the sweetness. So, the person who is actually original singer will be hang angry. Okay, you're not doing properly. Those who are expert, they won't like this. So, Shumanti Radhika, she snatches the food from Krishna and says, you're not playing properly. Then Shumanti Radhika takes the food and teaches Krishna, you should play like this. Then the nectar of, the, of Krishna's lips went to Radharani. Then the nectar of Radharani went to Krishna. Nectar of Krishna's lips went to Shmati Radhika, and then Shmati Radhika's nectar of her lips went to Krishna. When this happens, when they're cow grazing, but Shmati Radhika was not there, she said. Are you hearing or sleeping? When Krishna cow grazes, when he's grazing the cow's lunchtime, So Gurudev was saying before that Baladev is always in Shraddham or always with Krishna when he's cow grazing because Mother Jashoda asked Baladev to take care of Krishna. And she's saying, yeah, but you're saying that the gopis were at the house. Gopis are not like you and me, Gurudev is saying. So you're thinking it's not proper thinking. It's like the gopis were in their house in, in, in the village, the gopis were in the house and seeing Krishna in the Bhavanitra, eyes of emotions. But actually, Joga Maya, Joga Maya actually arranged that they actually there also with Krishna. When you go there, you understand. So one form, you're here, another form, you're with Krishna. This happens for gopis. When you go there, then you understand. Who is playing the flute? So first, Krishna himself is playing. Another point, sometimes Krishna and Baladev. Third point, sometimes Krishna and Shumati Radhika. Do you understand? If I understand, speak too much Sanskrit to you, you won't understand anything. So Krishna and Shumati Radhika. 
For example, if you're playing harmonium, you're not playing properly, those who are experts, they'll show you once how to do it. You should do it like this. Then if you also don't do properly, they'll hold your hand and do it like this and teaching you. Do like this. So two hands are there. Keyboard. You have to press the keyboard like this. He'll teach, show you how to press the, 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 the keyboard. So Krishna is not playing properly the flute. Then Shumatanatka first. First she snatches the flute from him. You don't know how to play. Krishna said, okay, so teach me. Then Shumatanatka. Krishna, sorry, couldn't play snatch properly. Oh, sorry. First she tried to teach him. Krishna still couldn't do it nicely. Then at the same time, both they put their mouth in the flute and doing together. So that photo, like for example, Radha and Krishna together, they are playing the flute together. Is it transcendental? So first she snatched the flute, try to teach him, give back. The flute, he tries to do it second time, he can do it, he cannot. Then they play together, just like that photo. <laughs> they play together the flute with two lips, two lips of them, both lips in the flute at the same time. So this is in the plural, plural, this verse is in the plural. It's like playing the flute in the plural, okay? So which, who is the plural playing the flute? Can be Krishna Balara or Krishna and Shamatarad. Anu means behind, means first, first, first Krishna plays the flute, first Krishna played. Try to listen properly, hear properly. First Krishna played, but he didn't play properly the flute. Then Shamatiradika snatches the flute from him. Then who will play it now? Rad Radhika will play. She thought, oh, you have to do the melody like this, the sound like this, note like this. Then she gave back the flute to Krishna. And then Krishna again couldn't do it properly. Again. On, on purpose Krishna did this, okay? He me messed up of the melody. Okay, so let's play together. Then they did together. Then they played together. Both couple, like other Krishna, they played the flute together. <laughs> sound of the flutes. So they were drinking this nectar flute. So this is the mood of the gopis with Purvarag. It's like you're saying, oh, but the gopis were sitting in their houses. Yeah, but in one form they were there, but in the other form, Jogamaya arranged that they were present also in the cow grazing and they were manifested there. Or you can also say in Prakat Lila or Aprakat Lila. Because Aprakat Lila is transcendental and eternal in the transcendental world. That Lila is still going on always. So Shukadeva Goswami, at the same time, he was having the darshan of both Lilas, Prakat and Aprakat, at the same time. So the Lilas of Krishna is still going on in any universe. There's not only, only one universe. There are unlimited universes. Krishna's pastimes are still going on in one universe. And they are always occurring, happening in this transcendental world. That Lila is going on. So Shukadeva Goswami Pad, when he told Kata to Parikit Maharaj, Shukadeva Goswami Pad, he was directly seeing the Lila. The Lila which was going on in the transcendental world, he was also looking at seeing that pastime and also the Prakat Lila. 
क्योंकि ही कुछ सी फ्रॉम द स्पिरिच वर्ल्ड एंड इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड द लीला एट द सेम टाइम द ग्रेट सेंट्स दे इट्स लाइक दिस दे हैव दर्शन ऑफ द लीला देन दे टेल द लीला सो इन द वेनुगीत इन मेनी प्लेसेस ऑफ वेनुगीत शुकदेव को सुनी पाद ही वाज सो अब्जॉर्ब डिस्क्राइब इन द वेनुगीत बिकॉज़ वाज डायरेक्टली सीन सो दैट्स व्हाई ही यूज्ड द वर्ड इता इता इन संस्कृत इज लाइक this this one here you know like when you point out like this person like something's close to you so this sanskrit pronoun is used so he used this word eta like this person this person so he's pointing out this person's right here when he was describing the kata he's directly looking seeing that person he was absorbed in bhav shukadev goswami pan look at the good fortune of this see the good fortune of this dear but if you say but shmati rat ka told this verse and shmati rat ka if you say shmati rat ko sitting in javat In the she sat in Javad, she was seeing this Leela that Krishna was in the forest, and she described this verse. She was so absorbed in Bhav, she was actually seeing directly, or hiding her Bhav. Avahita Bhav means hiding her Bhav. She was hiding her Bhav, applying her Bhav to some someone else. Example. I am feeling hungry, but I won't say I'm hungry. I say, look, time's up. It's two o'clock. All devotees are here. Feed the devotees. Means what's the meaning? I am feeling hungry. If I come and say I'm feeling hungry, according to Rasa Shastra, this is not giving so much happiness. According to Shastra, it's not proper. You should not speak directly. Language is not that sweet if you speak directly. If I say, "Look, they are feeling hungry," I say, "No, Maharaj, you just took prasad." No, 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 they are feeling hungry. Means what? I'm feeling hungry. If I say, "I'm feeling hungry," feed me. This is not so sweet according to Rasa Shastra. So if you say this shloka belongs to Shmati Rat, I mean, it's spoken by her, because actually she was absorbed in Bhav and she saw the state, the condition of the deer. This is what happens in the stage of Mahabha. Atma Bismaran, you forget your own self. Six symptoms of Mahabha are there. खनते कल्पतम कल्पते खनातम थोड़ी समय इवन इवन शॉर्ट टाइम अ शॉर्ट टाइम फीलिंग सेपरेशन फील्स लाइक बिलियंस ऑफ इयर्स इवन द टाइम ऑफ द आई लीड्स बीइंग शट जस्ट लाइक व्हेन यू ब्लिंक दे फील लाइक दे आर बिलियंस ऑफ टाइम थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टाइम्स विदाउट सीइंग कृष्ण and when they meet to krishna even if it's for billions of years so many nights of lord brahma still the gopis feel like it's just a moment it's hard to understand six symptoms of mahabhava are there which ones i told kalpate khanasto ar khanate kalpate ar ब्रह्मांड शुभ कार्य था तिजक जनी प्रति ललसा आत्म विस्मय हो गया आसन जनता हृदय बिलोलन आसन जनता हृदय बिलोलन सब देख समझ में नहीं आएगा तो क्या बताएं इफ यू डोंट इवन अंडरस्टैंड द संस्कृत वर्ड व्हाट कैन आई टेल यू हृदय बिलोलन आसन जनता हृदय बिलोलन Everyone's hearts, minds start to become agitated. All the living entities, you don't even understand. It's transcendental words, you cannot understand anyway. Just hear, hear, hear. If you hear ten times, maybe something will stay inside your ear. Transcendental vibration. Affect, stimulate everyone's hearts. 
in mines. It's like in an ocean. If there's a whirlpool and the sound is coming, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So all the living entities become agitated and stimulated because of the Mahabhava of the Gopis. Asana Janata Harid Vilulam. It's the stage of Mahabhava happening with the Gopis and Shumateratka. All the human beings, everyone become agitated, stimulated or disturbed. I cannot explain with words. That's why, but it's described the symptoms of Mahabhav when the gopis are feeling separation. Sansa so Prem can just speak about. So that's why it's Swasam Vedadasha Javat Ashrevriti. Only when you realize, get there, then you understand. If you speak with words, you cannot understand anything. But by the mercy of the saints or the gopis, then you can understand. So now just hear, continue hearing, 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 hearing again and again and pray for mercy. That's like yesterday you said, Gurudev, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Some, you told, no? He told Gurudev, Sandarai Goswami Maharaj. Gurudev was giving kata and you're going here and there and Gurudev told, why are you doing this? Gurudev said, sit one place and just hear, don't go here and there. Then he said, but I'm not understanding. And Gurudev said, this is your sadhana, even if you're not understanding. He said, sit down. To control your mind, concentrate your mind is not that easy. Even if you don't understand, just sit down. And pray, and pray for the mercy. By the mercy of Prabhu, of Krishna. Then all this will manifest in your heart, then you understand by your intelligence and uh, scholarship can never understand by your intelligence or mind just hear open your ears very widely and let it go inside because this transcendental vibration Shabda Brahma that's it Atma Bismaran Tirjak Jani Prapti Lansa Tirjak Jani Prapti Lansa so these are two symptoms in total the six symptoms of Mahabhav Atma Vismaran is one of them you forget your own self what I'm saying, what he's saying. I am the enjoyer or the enjoyee. I don't even know. We're like one. Am I the enjoyer or the enjoyee? They don't know. We're like one. We are so united. That's like one. I don't even know if I'm the enjoyer or enjoyee. I am enjoy enjoy They don't know. mood. All these things are spiritual. Even if a thousand words, you cannot, it's not possible to describe these things. It's a thing of a realization. Anubhav Bidya is a knowledge only of not realization. You can only know that thing by realizing yourself. It cannot be described by words. It cannot. Like something sweet, suppose. You've written a rasgula. Rasgula, rasgula is sweet. But what is this? What is sweet? What is sweet? Only those who have eaten a sweet, they know what is a sweet taste. For example, if you ask a, a dumb person, like a person who cannot speak, how is a rasgula? He'll say, mm -hmm. he cannot say sweet, right? He cannot speak sweet. We eat sweets. So, so he said, mm, so sweet that rasagula, the sweetest. Super sweet. You put super, you put any adjective. It was excellent. Wonderful. You, excellent. There's no even word better to say. It was super excellent. Amazing. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. 
You can put adjectives in adjectives. But what are the transcendental things? Until we haven't relished it, you don't know what is the taste. Is it true or not? Even the words cannot. The wor uh, words come there, touch and rebound. Rebound, say, come back. <laughs> the words cannot go there. Beyond the speed of the mind, beyond the speed of words. Uh, sorry, beyond the speed of sound, beyond the speed of... Something which is inconceivable, inconceivable, cannot, cannot be understood by any material language or words. It's so something of matter of realization. How is, how is the form of Bhagavan? Is the, his form the forms we see like this? No, this only just to show us something, but his form is so divine. By his mercy, you can see, can realize. He's so beautiful, so handsome. What can I tell you? Mahaprabhu himself told Rup Sanatan. Hear about Krishna's tattva. Krishna mercifully performs pastimes like a human being. Understand? By hearing again and again and again and again, when the mercy of Prabhu, of God, you'll be able to realize. The day you realize, you'll cry so much, you'll cry so much. What can I tell you? Fire on me, fire on me. Why did I describe Krishna's form like this? Nothing is like, like all the comparisons were, were terrible. Just like when you're frying a puri, if the puri is still uncooked, you know puri? If it's still uncooked when you're frying, puri, when you fry the puri, if you put it in the hot oil, it will be speaking, like doing the sound chuck, 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 and running around. But when when the puri is, is completely cooked, you stop speaking, like the sound chuck, 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 making the sound, and stop moving and just become brown, and that's it. So now we are in knowledge and discussing bug bubble chuck, 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 like blah, blah, blah. But when you come there, then you become so silent. Just seeing the beautiful form of Krishna and fainting. So in the end of Vishnath Chakravati in the end of Madhuri Kadamin, Vishnath Chakravati Thakura says this. Krishna, Govinda has all this sweetness of his voice, of his nectar, of his lips, of his form, so Sarja Sokumari, of his youth. Anyway, God gives darshan to the devotee and the devotee faints. So Rupya, God shows his beautiful form to the devotee. According to the kind of the devotee, to make the devotee come back to his senses, then Bhagavan appears in a different way. If the devotee is in Dasya Bhak, the de God will, with the conch, like the sunk, will touch the chin, chin of the devotee to wake him up from this thing, like make, make him come back to consciousness. And then he sees the beautiful form of the God and again, again faints. Bhagavan says, Oh my devotee, you have done so many austerities for me without eating, so many austerities and like just for bearing cold and heat. I cannot do anything for you. Hearing this, the devotee starts crying. Prabhu, I never did anything. Mercifully, you give me darshan. The devotees of if someone is from Sakyarasa, Bhagavan will hold his hands. Vatsalarasa, Bhagavan will embrace. Or also put the hand on the head of the devotee and smell his, sniff his head. Sniff. And if it's Madhurasa, then Bhagavan will embrace and kiss the devotee. You can read. 
Yeah. I'm just indicating this is Madruka Domenica. Time's up, huh? So beautiful. What else can I tell you? Bhagavan has such a beautiful form. When you see this form, what is happens to the devotee when he sees the form of Bhagavan? Then the devotee faints and God make the devotee come makes the devotee come back to his senses. He's all in the stage of Prem. Then Bhagavan giving this Prem to the devotee is making the devotee dance and sing. Sometimes the devotee is like crazy, completely dancing because of Prem. Sometimes raising his arms. Many kinds of movements with his feet and hands because of Prem. Who can understand his bhav? Seeing these movements of Prem, of the devotee because of Prem, God himself becomes impressed and says, Wow, how my devotee is reacting to my beautiful form, wow. Then Bhagavan himself starts crying and says, Oh, uh -huh. what is my beautiful form? Let's see my beautiful form, my devotee. He be, like, became mad like this. Who is this topmost devotee? Is Radharani. Once Shamati Radhika, she was sitting feeling separation by herself in an empty place, solitary place, and she was suffering separation from Krishna. And then she saw a blue cloud on the sky, in the sky. And then Shamati Radhika raised her arms. Some friend asked, Oh, Saki, oh, Radha, what are you looking at? Then in poetical language she said, I'm seeing this beautiful Nilakas, Nilakas. Nilakas means blue cloud or blue sky or also Krishna. So she speaks in like a poetical language or with some poetical language or comparisons or like a metaphor. Metaphor is you know, it's hard to understand. She, she sees a black cloud and Shumati Radhika becomes completely mad and wants to, runs to embrace the cloud. Krishna, he, he sees this from far. He sees what's happening. Hiddenly, he sees. Krishna is invisible, invisible in Braj. And he sees all these movements of Shmati Radhika. And Krishna says, this doesn't happen to me. I want to meet Shmati Radhika, yes. But I don't become as crazy as she becomes. Wherever she looks, Whatever she sees that is even a little bit similar to Krishna, somehow she becomes completely mad. If she sees the dark, the dark uh, darkness, no? she wants to embrace the darkness, thinking that she has found Krishna. If she sees a Tamal tree, she also wants to embrace, thinking it's Krishna. Chitana Charitamrita explains. Shnas Goswami wrote, Krishna says, the tamal tree is black, blackish and Shumati Radhika embraces the tree and thinks so it's Krishna no, I offer up so what is that in Shumati what are these three things? Krishna himself told. What is this love that Shumati Radhika feels for me? What is this last limit of divine love of Shumati Radhika? What is this limit of her love? Krishna is thinking, I am Bhagavan. 
I'm always um, all knowing, I know everything. Sarvagata, Mugdata, completely innocent at the same time. And also I'm Atmaramata, Aptakamata. I have self-satisfaction. And all my desires automatically satisfied, but I don't become mad as I heard. Krishna says, if he, I see something similar to Shmataratka, don't become like mad and thinking it's her. Shmataratka, whatever, whatever, anything she sees that has any similarity to my shape or something, she becomes completely mad and crying. What is this? Krishna says, what is this? You tell me. What is my sweetness and my beauty? That seeing my beauty and sweetness, everyone's become, become so attracted to me. But when I feel the perfume of Shumati Radhika, her smell, I cannot control myself when I feel her fragrance, when I smell her fragrance. In Krishna, Chaitanya Krishna Skaraj Gosam explains, everyone becomes happy and attracted by my perfume. My fragrance. But when I f smell the fragrance of Shumati Radhika, even I become completely intoxicated. Krishna says. Praman Saraswati Pad says, so that direction that Shumati Radhika is standing, I do pranam to that direction. Because the smell of her body, so uh, our fragrance of her body, our body is in our clothing. And then that the wind brings the smell of Shumati Radhika's body through the air to Krishna. And Krishna says, oh, air, Pavanadev, you are fortunate, blessed, because you have touched the Gadomadita. That's why Radharani's name is Gandomadita. Means she makes everyone mad because of her fragrance of her body. Even Krishna himself. Like Krishna says to the wind, you are blessed because you are able to touch Shmatarata's clothes and bring... Yeah. And also another point is that you are playing with Shmatarata even. Like the clothes, you know? Playing. The wind is playing with the, the Shmatarata's clothes. The breeze. And Krishna says, she, when she's man, angry, I cannot even come her, near her. What speak of touching her? What speak of playing with her? But you are doing this. So Krishna tells the wind he's blessed. This verse is so beautiful. This verse of Prabodhananda Saraswati Pad. Yesterday I spoke when Shmantrat is in man. So, by the sidelong glance, by the sidelong glance, Krishna himself, in that battlefield of love, Krishna faints. Gurudev gives his example. One king, one emperor can conquer all the different directions and nations and and all his subjects can glorify him and say Jai, Jai because he's the emperor and he just conquered so many countries and came back to his own country when he sits in the throne the wife, his queen is angry why did you stay so long, so long up far from here like apart and then the arrows of her eyes, when the king sees that, what speak of be sitting in the throne? He'll fall even from the throne. 
and he faints. He cannot even sit on the throne. So this example is given. Do you understand? So Krishna, he is the supreme lord, he killed so many demons, so, defeated so many people, everything. But now, because of the sidelong glance of Shumati Rakta, the arrows of her sidelong glance, Krishna is wounded, 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 and he is defeated. Not only defeated, he faints, he's knocked out. He falls on the ground, and then seeing this, Shumati Rakta says, what to do now? Krishna is knocked out. Then, Shimataratka tells her Manjaris, indicating like, Shimataratka says, okay, make Krishna come back to his senses. How? Then, the Manjaris have learned from Shimataratka to do some Kirtan related to Madan, Madan Sambanda Kirtan. And then they do this Kirtan, and then slowly, slowly, Krishna comes back to his senses. This is described. So beautiful. Last line of this verse. So this last verse is here. So when I will serve as like the servant of Shumatirat like this. So beautiful mood. So the Manjaris learned from Shemati Radhika because you have to learn everything from Shemati Radhika. What is the meaning of this? Not only from Radharani, but from all the Sakis. And Shemati Radhika will give you the stamp. Like, because she's the principal the other day I told her. So you have to learn how to sing from... So the eleven moods, eleven moods. One of them is Agasiva, means your service. You must read the book and understand. Agasiva means the seva which is designed to, uh, sorry, designed, delegated to you. Agasiva. So, Nam, Rup, Guna, Lila, there are 11 bhavs. One of them is Agasiva. What is your Agasiva? It means your delegated service. Do you know? You don't know anything now. You're crazy, you're all crazy. Read, read something, then I'll be happy to speak about it. But you don't need, you're not reading the books. That's why you're not understanding anything. How can you understand? You should read, study something from Shastra. You have to at least read the books. This is true or not? You're not reading, studying. And you think only hearing is enough. That's why in the college, first the professor gives the lecture and he'll say, tomorrow I'll give lecture about this subject. You have to study before coming to the class. The next day the teacher will teach about that thing that should have already studied back home. Then you still don't understand. Then third moment, again. How many days for each chapter, right? Because you have to study. You have to study, then hear, then study, then hear. But if you don't study or read, you heard A plus B, whole square. How, what can you understand from this? Nothing. So you have to first study about this, then you first study, okay, A plus B plus square is equal A2 plus B plus plus B plus B plus B plus B plus B plus B Anyway, but then you can ask your... Anyway, how A plus B whole square, what is the A square plus 2, two AB plus B square? You see, Maharaj, I don't understand. You will understand if first you study. But those who already have studied, so there's no more place for you to write in your copy. So some people write everything in their copy. So change your copy. Bring a new copy. Otherwise, delete everything they already had. Otherwise, you're, it's like full, full memory. Sometimes your email or computer is full, memory full, memory full. So you have to delete some things to be able to put new things. I have too many emails. 
have to delete something. Then you can put something new. Then you receive a new email. Otherwise, there's no space even for a new email. What do I have to read? Gurudev said, read Venu Gita, but I'm talking about John Lamani, Bhakti Rasamta Sindhu, also read and study the book of the Goswamis. About Agya Seva, this is in the Jaiva Dharma. So I read my book. Haridayarat. Is in Hindi and English. I returned all the books of Goswamis and put it there. Nothing's mine from there. Not my credit in that book. Everything credit to our Guru Vargas in that book, Jewels of the Heart. I did not write anything. I just collected and presented. That's the only thing I do. Because you're not going to search. Oh, where is written about I guess even this book, that book. So you won't search for in different books. But I did this and presented in one book. So we read only this book that is ex exactly explaining what is I guess and everything. It's good or not. So it's very easy. Just read this book. Otherwise, Maharaj, Agya Seva, where is it? How to find? Okay, go to the first take admission to the in the College of the Gopis. Enroll in the College of the Gopis. This is in the Jewels of the Heart. This kata is all there. Yeah. Yeah. But even if you read, you cannot understand because this kata about the College of the Gopis is also in the book Jewels of the Heart. So the five subjects in the University of the Gopis, what are the five subjects? The sloka of Rupa Goswami Pad. It's all described. But now time is up, it's 2 p.m. Today you need to go somewhere in the evening program. So, if you have studied something and if I speak, then I feel happiness. For four days I'm speaking Venugit, about Venugit, right? You should read something. But I know that even one day you open the Venugit to check what I was saying. <laughs> open the book at least and check. How is Venugit book? You haven't even opened it to check and see. You just say, Guru Dev, I don't understand. Understand. You just you only know one thing to say. First, study, read something. The sloka I'm talking about is search. It's such a beautiful verse. I'm speaking about two verses. Ah, I'm speaking for two hours from the same book. And my throat is even hurt from speaking so much about this. But it's just like playing the flute in front of the buffaloes. So when Gurudev used to give class, what? Oh. So, so, that, so we would see which book, book Gurudev was going to speak about. So first hiddenly we would check which book Gurudev was going to speak about before the class would start. Which Git he's going to speak about before the class starts, we would check. Then you can understand something. Otherwise you just sit down. So if you make a garland of one kind of flower called buck, it's a very soft flower, soft petals. It's very dear to Bhagavan, this flower. Krishna likes this garland, make of this special flower make called buck. I don't know if you know what is the English name or whatever. In Bengal, you can find this fruit, this flower. So she was making this garland. How to say? Plucking. She said, I'm making this garland for Krishna. And if Krishna doesn't come, what are you going to do? No problem. If he doesn't come, I can open, I can open the, the garland and make a subject with these flowers because it's also eatable flower. So in the same way, if you get, good. If you don't get, no problem. No. 
Harikata should be like this. You really hear Harikata properly when you have studied something, also you studied the books. I'm speaking about Venu Gita. I, I know that not even one person here opened the Venu Gita to check. Have you opened? No. Did you read? Tell me honestly. Not even one person has read. Re read something, then the happiness will come. Because when I speak, we'll understand. And so before, times were different. Now it's completely different. When you used to stay in the temple with Gurudev, we would always used to study before coming to class. Then you used to sit before in front of Gurudev and so we have to hear and study. Study, hear, hear, read, study, hear, read. Then it's good. Jai! Jai!